It all began with a road trip. It was the spring of 1969. Millie Rispit sat in the back seat of her friend's car as they drove through the streets of downtown Toronto, six hours to Montreal. Rispit was struck by the angular and elongated shapes of the new multi-lane highway and the blurred landscape. The artist became inspired. When Rispit returned to the Toronto studio she shared with friend and mentor artist Jack Bush, she began work on a series of 10 large paintings. The highway paintings, as they came to be known, recalled the images she'd seen on her impromptu road trip. Rispit created a stunning series of paintings that remarkably were lost for 50 years. They were never exhibited until now. This is the story of what happened to those paintings. Born in British Columbia, Millie Rispit attended the Vancouver School of Art, now the Emily Carr University. She recalls one particular artist and instructor, Roy Kiyuka. A gifted poet, musician, and painter, Kiyuka was instrumental in introducing Rispit to most of the artists who would influence her. Like Kiyuka, Millie was a colorist, focused on exploring the creative potential of color. She later completed a Master of Art History at Queen's University. In 1964, Rispit moved east to Toronto, where the art scene was more vibrant and experimental. The first years in Toronto were tough. Rispit slept on friends' couches, worked as a legal secretary, and modeled for art class. Finally, in 1967, armed with a government grant, she had enough money to begin serious painting. By 1968, she and her artist friends were making headlines in the Toronto art scene. They wanted to be known simply as artists, not female artists, viewed as an unnecessary label. Rispit had already held two solo exhibitions for her color form and her shaped paintings at the prestigious Carmen LaManna Gallery. Encouraged by Jack Bush, who recognized the importance of the highway paintings, Rispit rolled up two of them and took them to LaManna. He was dismissive and said he didn't care for them. The highway paintings were never exhibited. Rispit stored them away. In the fall of 1969, Rispit began to work on her ribbon paintings. She says she'd fallen in love with using raw canvas, an idea inspired by the American abstract artist Morris Lewis, a prominent member of the Washington Color School. But Rispit was ready to leave Toronto. In 1970, she moved to live and work in Montreal with a fellow artist. She was one of 14 artists who helped create Vehicle Art Inc., the first artist-run centre in the city. Rispit also had a solo exhibition. Millie Rispit decided to return to Eastern Ontario in 1976. For the last 45 years, she has continued to explore the power of colour and form in her work. Rispit has held more than 50 solo exhibitions, won countless awards including the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, and exhibited throughout North America and Europe. She is considered to be a master abstract colorist. Art critic Barry Lord from Art in America declared that Rispit's paintings were more insistent than Bush, more consciously structured than Molinari. Recently, while rummaging through her studio, Millie Rispit discovered eight rolled canvases. The highway paintings, lost for 50 years, had been found. Millie Rispit created 10 paintings in the highway collection, 
The first two were rejected because they were not up to her standards. They were painted using the same glazing method as the shaped paintings. The hard edges appear crisper because of the contrasting palette and the intersecting elongated shapes. Both the darker palette, inspired by the earthy spring landscape, and the dynamic formal relationships were a departure for Risfit. No one was painting like this in Toronto at the time. So why didn't the highway paintings appeal to Carmen Lamana? They were very different from Millie's previous work. Risfit thinks perhaps he saw them as abstractions of the landscape. He was only interested in pure abstraction. Perhaps he didn't like the sharper edges or the darker palette. These paintings were truly unique in 1969. Avant-garde. What impact might they've had if the world had seen them? With decades of hindsight, we can now appreciate their exquisite mastery of color and dynamic form. Until now, only a few people had seen them. Jack Bush, Carmen Lamana, Leslie Jones, and Yvonne Lamerick. Until now. For me, it's always exploration. It's not about actually uh, the discovery or reaching the goal. It's always a process, a dynamic process. You need to find every way to keep yourself off balance. I mean, I've been doing this for 50 some odd years and I hope to have a few more good years left. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna continue doing that because it uh, keeps things moving, it keeps me moving, it keeps, it's a way of presenting challenges.